What's up guys, Fano here. We have a request to react to this video. What happened to this soda? The weirdest soda ever made. So let's check it out. Let's check it out. The beverage company in the world advertising its new soft drink. Okay, I thought he was going to talk about Coca-Cola. You know what I mean? But no, we got some stuff called OK. By the way, as a, as a disclaimer, this video is a reaction. I'm not the original creator of this video. This is a reaction, guys. So I'm be reacting to you guys. Never seen this video before. Live. So, cheers. I have some soda here. I just had a lunch. Some chili dog. A chili dog. It was great. With a picture of a mass murderer on his can. It makes sense why I do you want to have. You don't want a mass murderer. In like some 1980s style photo as your as your guy uh, as your mascot, you know what I mean? Not everybody wants that. Yeah. The year was 1993, and Coca-Cola released this edgy soda called OK Soda to test the markets. But what was really special about this drink is that unlike any other well-known beverage, OK Soda set low expectations, as co-project's manager said. OK Soda under promises. It doesn't say this is the next great thing like other drinks do. It's the flip side of OK. <laughs> no, they must bring back. They must bring back this soda, guys. OK Soda has like some anime character, guys. Guys, would you drink this? I'll give it a try. So, soda in general doesn't taste that bad to me. I'm sure they can make it taste bad. And it's gonna have like this, uh, like I'll put it might be the best tasting soda of my life. You know what I mean? Who knows? Who knows? Guys, would you try the soda? Let me know. Overclaiming. Okay, soda's marketing campaign still feels unique to this day. It didn't emphasize how to delicious the drink was or how you should enjoy it with your friends. In fact, what is this? It's ineligible, guys. The campaign was made a special effort to purpose. I'm just wondering when this was launched. Is there the Adult Swim? Feels like an Adult Swim bit. Man, where's the game? These animations. Who, who's buying this? Are you saying Coca-Cola? Who was who's behind this squad? Because this is this is almost comical. <laughs> this is like it's directly comical like seriously you know what I mean it's about a comic book or like comic book style kind of like I don't know I never really got super into comic books guys but it sound, they sound they sound they're super cool to have Mostly promote Nick again these are these quote unquote like children's hobbies are just adult hobbies. <coughs> Very expensive adult hobbies. Get it publicity. But why did Coca Cola pull this act? And why the cans were the way they were? As it turns out, there's a lot more behind the story of OK Soda. Dear Blank, as you may have heard, our television chain letter promoting OK Soda has yielded interesting results. Steve S. of Oakland, California, declined a can of OK at a party. I think, I thought it would be like Oklahoma, but okay, it's Oakland, California. <laughs> Never been there. The next day, his fiance announced her. Well, I just can't remember what day he was talking about when this uh, launch room. Intention to marry his best friend. And it doesn't, seem the be doesn't seem to be the most Drinker of like, looks like 70s. I don't know, guys. Like, why this can't be a real commercial, right? But, but hey, that's how us humans always have done things. So. Okay. You see, around that time, Coke was not dominating the market like usual. After the Pepsi challenge in 1976, Pepsi thrived and became really good at advertising. However, instead of appealing to younger audience like Pepsi did, Coke took a different approach. They wanted something that could resonate with an increasingly skeptical Generation X. 
So they hired Sergio Zyman to be the chief of all marketing for all Coca-Cola beverages. So they're making a direct competitor to their own brand, which they already kind of do, I'm sure, in certain markets. It's just like one corporation. Just, just, just group it under one corporation. At the end of the day, you know what I mean? It, it, get, it just gets rid. For the people who don't know him, Sergio Zyman was responsible for the new Coke campaign, probably the biggest marketing failure in Coke's history. They named the drink OK Soda because, according to their research, <clears throat> I do like what they do with the barcode. So that, I'm sure they had it on the packaging. It's futuristic style packaging. There's no way they had their packaging like this. It, it has to be the animation, right? Coke or Coca-Cola was the second most well-known term in all languages. The first term was OK. OK Soda captured what they perceived as the... I guess. Yeah, these are definitely new sodas. Like, bro, you know, you got some different nutrition facts. Just like futuristic style, like, you guys, I try it. Gen X outlook on life. Not great, not awful, just OK. And that's exactly what OK Soda promised. A marketing consultant to several major... OK, like, uh, you know, how Ness, when he taught with Ness. Soda brand said, People who are 19 years old are very accustomed to have being manipulated and knowing that they're manipulated. I know some of you have seen the Coca-Cola tagline, Have a Coke and Smile from the late 1970s. No. Or Pepsi's 1980 tagline, Choice of a New Generation. Both captured the mood of their respective times with messages of positivity. I don't remember most of it. The and youthful energy. However, OK Soda did the exact opposite, especially with their tagline. I was born in the 1990s, man. Line, things are going to be OK. But here's the thing. While doing my research about the soda, I found some people claiming that OK Soda was part of a conspiracy by conservative thinker Irving Crystal and Coca-Cola to create a cadre of conservative youth by yeah. subliminally influencing them through an unsuccessful so <laughs> Sorry guys, I thought I was on my YouTube premium account. Ignore the ad real quick. Yeah, it doesn't seem like 2015s, 2020s. Bro, you got the cool, like, label over here, you know, branding, you know, um, that we're the new hip company, kind of start a project program, whatever, bro. <clears throat> Even though it's Coke Cola doing it, it still has got that vibe, bro. Artwork and slogans like, things are going to be okay, were meant to promote a sense of resigned acceptance of reduced opportunities, and... So they changed the label and put the... <clears throat> they put the barcode in a different spot and like changed its flavor a little. I mean, may I'll buy it. The existing order among disillusioned Gen Xers. But why did OK fail? Or did OK really fail? The transcript of a 1994 National Public Radio interview with Tom Perko, the president of a food and beverage consultant firm who worked closely with Coca-Cola on OK, he said that OK was never intended to succeed as a soda. The whole point of the project was to inject a hip conservative worldview, as expressed by the soda's advertising, into Xers who have been rendered deeply impressionable. That's a hidden message underneath it all, guys. It seems like a headache message, man. What if I just agreed to that, man? You know what I mean? <sighs> the suicide cook hands look like this when you pull sun. When you put on the sunglasses from when. And they live. And they live. Okay, no more comments. Well, by whatever it was, Crystal. Once the message had been delivered, OK could vanish from the 7 Eleven as mysteriously as it appeared in the first place. Is this true? Well, I don't know. But the artwork was really groundbreaking and looked like nothing anyone. Happens all the time. Feels like AI. Is there even someone behind this, guys? Sorry if I'm sounding a little delusional. Wait, anyway, it says 1994, so they were ahead of the time. They were the first to adopt this cool, like, style, I guess. Or at least the first example I've seen of it, guys. I don't know if you would, uh, I don't know if you'd do this, guys. 
Would you rock with it, guys? I mean, guys, we we got no, we got like we gotta get some, uh, one of these sodas, guys. Seems okay if we try it. But then again, we already have how many knockoffs of it, man? Are you gonna make like it look like Coke but taste like Sprite? <laughs> like what's, what? What? There's so much, almost there's so many things we could do with it, guys. And they all sound amazing. When it ever seen before for a soda product, instead of bright appealing colors typically used for soda branding, the OK Soda imagery featured expressions ranging from boredom to fear to contempt, using dystopian imagery with colors like black, white, gray, and red. Instead of short, memorable catchphrases, OK Soda cans were covered in subliminal messages. <clears throat> oh, the new anime sauce, yeah. Let me know how it was. I haven't been able to try the new foods recently, so let me know how they were, guys. And some weird graphics. Some other cans had things called coincidences, like this one. Pause the video. Coincidental. If you want to read it. Okay, so they even came with its own manifesto, snippets of which could be found on the cans. Some of the selecting sayings were, what's the point of okay? Well, what's the point of anything? Don't be fooled into thinking that there has to be a reason for everything. OK Soda does not subscribe to any religion or endorse any political party or anything other than feel OK. By far the most memorable part of OK was the 1-800-I-FEEL-OK hotline that you could call to hear several weird pre-recorded messages. Thanks for being such a devoted caller of the OK hotline. There's no real secret of being okay. Coincidence number 35, so they got like cool little messages to make you buy it more often so you get so kinda like the Taco Bell packets, guys. Listen closely to this okay coincidence selected especially for you. Or you could leave your own testimonial or story about OK Soda. Hello, this is uh, Steve W. calling from Denver, and uh, while well, I was studying the other night in the library, and I was drinking an OK Soda, and uh, I accidentally spilled it on my notes. And all the notes that I spilled the OK Soda on, I have a photographic memory of. So, thanks a lot. And the way they printed their packaging, it's like, if you look at the bottom right corner, it's not even fully lined up correctly, guys. Hi. Hi, we're visible. Let me just skip this ad, guys. Excuse me. This should be the last ad of the video, maybe. Images that became a mascot of sorts for OK Soda was a simple but striking drawing of a cult leader and murderer, Charles Manson. Created by famous cartoonist uh. Daniel Close of the Ghost World fame as a way to prank Coca Cola since his contract didn't prohibit. Seems like a headache, bro. You bit. Okay, it looks like he's been drawing a lot, man. Putting a mass murderer on the cans. That's literally. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I, uh, I'm having caffeine today, so. What he said. Please be aware that OK Soda will soon introduce new package designs. Look for these distinctive UPC codes. To save time at the register, you may wish to scan them now. Incidentally. <laughs> Is this an advertisement? Advertisements nowadays never talk about UPC codes. The actual packaging may look like this and feature the faces of ordinary citizens such as yourself. Uh, let me uh, take this one for a screenshot. Faces of ordinary They prize can and they were randomly put into vending machines where instead of having soda inside, they got the red and black. Seems like a subliminal message for Coca-Cola, really. It contains some kind of premium item or prize, like a hat or a shirt, but mostly hats. And also put an additional 25 cents in it so you can get an actual soda. Honestly, getting a hat out of a soda can from a vending machine is quite funny. And now, the most important question in this video is, what does OK Soda taste like? TV and radio commercials describe OK as citrusy and spicy, though young consumers described it as slightly spicy and likened it to a combination of orange soda and black Coca-Cola. Other consumers more often compared it to the everything from the soda fountain cocktail known as a graveyard. It really looks like it can't It doesn't like taste fruity at all. Yeah, it's just, it's wait, like it's fruity? It's, it's supposed, supposed to be fruity. fruity. Everything from the soda. It tastes kind of bad when I do it like that though. Do it like that. Nobody mix all the flavors like that. So. 
It tastes like maybe like a little with a bit of like teenage and citrus. Whether it was the drink's just okay flavor or the marketing campaign of over the top bleakness, okay never quite caught on only being available from 1993 to 1995 before being discontinued. It was a good run. You could probably find some of the surviving cans out there. Following disappointing sales in test cities like Austin, Seattle, and Providence. No. Despite a huge outpouring of support, there have been detractors, notably Americans mad about OK. They have compared our campaign to a virus and to the notorious kudzu plant. Creeping everywhere, strangling all it touches, needing only dirt to survive. Despite his short lifespan and lack of widespread distribution, the quirky soda brand has managed to maintain a small but dedicated cult following over the years. Fans continue to collect OK soda cans, merchandise, and even attempt <laughs> to recreate the original soda's taste. Some loyal consumers even created a site called Save OK Soda. The site suggested Save Oklahoma Soda writing Coca-Cola and telling them what you thought about not being able to drink the beverage choice of the overboard youth of America. So one of the fellas did, but unfortunately Coke responded with this letter. So if you haven't already- They're saying they don't. They just sounded like some automated message, bro. That's why I don't mess with the companies, bro. Call our number on the back, like, you know what I mean? Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, press the subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this video. Peace out.